Hello and welcome. This video will cover the temperature dependence on semiconductors experiment, in which we have a silicon diode placed on a heater here, and we are applying reverse bias to it using this power supply while reading the reverse current using this multimeter. As we read the reverse current, we are going to increase the temperature of the diode using this temperature controller which basically controls the heater the diode fix on we are going to do the, this uh, current measurement over a certain range of temperatures we are going to start from room temperature up to 150 degrees with 10 degrees in increments at each time now you can see the current as of now is reading 0 amps because the power supply is not applying any reverse bias. If we switch this power supply on, you should be able to read reverse current as of now. Now, before getting to the experiment, we'll need to make sure connections are correct as per the figure provided in your sheet. Normally, as you arrive to the lab, the Experiment setup will be pre-connected for you. However, you will need to make sure the connections are right before you switch on equipment. So as I mentioned here, this part here, having the diode and the heater. So this heater should be connected to main supply. And at the same time should be connected to 20 volt on these two terminals to provide voltage to operate the heater. The diode itself is connected to this junction box in here. This jun junction box is to provide us with the connections for reverse voltage, current measurement, and the two wires coming from the diode. You can see a resistor in the middle here. This is used for the purpose of current measurement. The multimeter is connected uh, as a meter in this case and is set to read DC current. Voltage supply is we are using the two independent supplies of this power supply one to supply 10 volts as reverse bias to the diode and the other one to supply 20 volt as inlet voltage to the heater. The temperature controller is this part in here and we should make sure it's pointing at zero before we switch on the experiment. If all the connection is right, you are good to switch on both devices in here and connect this heater to the main supply. You will need to adjust the reading of this multimeter by selecting DC current. Now we can start with the experiment. The first step should be around 30 degrees, considering the room temperature is between 20 and 25. So we'll need to turn this knob to positive 30 degrees. And as we do that, we should notice some current is being drawn to the heater and we'll notice a green, two green lights on this temperature controller. We'll need for, to wait for a while till the heater heats up and the lights in here start uh, to flicker on and off. As we reach that point, we'll need to wait for another five minutes from the blinking point to make sure that uh, the temperature is being reached that level on the diode. Now remember, this temperature is getting feedback, this temperature controller is getting feedback from the heater. We'll need to wait that extra five minutes to make sure the heat is transferred from the heater to the diode. Now, as you start, it might be a bit fast, but at the end, when you are going to do something more than 120 degrees, you will need to wait more. 
So always wait till the lights in here start to switch on and off means the temperature is reached that level is just like it's keeping it warm up and down. After this starts to switch on and off, you will need to wait five minutes before you get reading. Now the ammeter readings might be still rising as you take it. So as you reach the five minutes, record the reading, change the temperature again, up plus 10 degrees, and wait till the lights are still start to blink on and off again. We'll keep repeating this uh, 10 degrees in increments, starting from 30, 40, 50, up to 150 degrees. Now you should uh, know we got differences of this experiment in campus in here, and they have different diodes. So don't compare your results to other group, as their diode might be different. It, you could can take photo of your diode to pull its data sheet later and compare your findings. Uh, something you need to know in here, this middle part where the diode is installed is going to be very hot, it, which is basically the temperature we are talking about. So it could reach 100, 120 and up to 150 degrees. You don't want to touch it or touch the diode while the experiment is working or after it's done, as it will take some time to cool down. So this is basically it. Thank you for watching.